In this video, I'm going to show you how to splice your winch rope. In this case, I'm going to be splicing the Factor 55 splicer onto my winch rope of my Land Cruiser. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I am all about educating and building the four-wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you can get those notifications as well. Now I'm going to be assuming that you're going to be doing this repair at home where you've got some tools. You could potentially do this same technique out on the trails. So I've kind of blended the two. So what I mean by that is this is the bare minimum tools you kind of need to get this job done. A little bit of electrical tape or masking tape would do. A sharpie pen is handy. A good sharp knife with a, with a good blade on it. And one of the Factor 55 fast fids or you can do it without the fids but hey these do make life a bit easier so the first thing we actually need to do is do a taper on the end of the rope now I recently did my first ever one of these splices when I fitted this up to the vehicle now I didn't do that video on YouTube I put it onto the Facebook page and it had about I don't know, it's nearly up to 300,000 views on it and people found it really interesting. The trouble was, as I say in that video, I'm not a total expert on this, and I still aren't, but a lot of people came back to me in that video and said, Matt, you really need to taper the end of your rope down. I'm like, why? What's that all about? Well, it's because if you don't taper it down and you just have a square end like this, you will actually create a weaker break point in your rope. And the guys at Roadrunner Off-Road here in Australia, um, Barry and Cam, they did some testing on this. And they found that if you taper the end of your rope down, you will get a 16% increase in rope strength as a minimum. So it's really important you do this next step so that you maintain the integrity of your rope. And I was watching another YouTube video where what he said is that the easiest way to taper it down is to take out a number of strands of rope. So the way he did it was this. Get your marking pen and, and come up the rope a certain number and then just pick two strands and mark those strands like that. Then skip these two strands, we shouldn't mark that, and mark these two strands. Skip two strands, mark these two strands so you end up with those six dots forget that one that was a mistake all right now we take those strands and just pick them out of the braid so pull that out like that pull that out like that okay that's the mistake dot take this strand pull that out take this strand pull that out okay so there's there's those strands there and then get our last two pull that out and pull that out okay so now we've got six strands pulled out of the main core of the rope now we're going to cut those off I find even with a brand new knife in here, a blade in here I find this stuff really hard to cut. <laughs> so, um, hey, anyway, work it out. Don't cut yourself. I, do, I have tried scissors. I reckon, to be honest, the easiest would probably be a grinder. And, cut it with a grinder or some sort of device like that. So if you've got ideas as to how to do this better than I'm doing, I mean, maybe a, maybe a, a chopping block like one of those kitchen boards would be a go. I haven't got one, so I'm not doing that. But I'd love to know your techniques. Put it in the comments down below. All right, so you can see we're cutting those off. Okay, so now they're cut off, okay, and shortened up. So now we can just blend, blend those back into the braid, okay? 
like that, nice and easy. Now, you've still got a couple of strands here and you could leave that, it's kind of tapered, but hey, soon as we're here, why not just cut a little bit more weight, tapering it out towards the end? So I'm just, you know, just anywhere, just cut through that. It's just about getting a nice taper for the end of the rope. Okay. Okay, so see how that now tapers down because we've cut all of that weight out along that length. Now get your electrical tape and we just wanna t t basically hold the ends together so that uh, we can do the next step. All right, so just tape down along that. You could use a masking tape or a gaffer tape, but really, I don't think it'll really matter. Okay. There we go. So now we've got a nice tapered end to our rope. Now, what we need here is we need to have this go through our splicer, and then we need to have a berry which is where the rope is gonna disappear into the inner sheath of this. We need to have a berry of around 700 millimeters. Now, the fast fit has on it inches marked on there, and it's actually got on here how much you bury it by, depending on the diameter of your winch rope. But if you just work on 700 millimeters, that's gonna cover you off for the majority of the standard ropes that you're going to come across and have on your standard recreational four-wheel drive winch. So that's 70 centimetres if you have to work that way. Okay, so let's do the next step. So we need to put the rope through the splicer. So we just poke that around. Now because we've taped the rope and this rope is a little bit older, it doesn't go through the splicer quite as easy, but I just use the fid like this there's a bit of a needle to feed the rope around. You can see the rope's just working its way through the splicer. I think you'll find if you've got new rope, this will be very easy. Okay, so pull that through. That's now fed in the splicer. Now, the reason the splicer's designed like this is it gives your rope protection from sunlight so you don't get that UV damage. Um, yeah, so, and, and then this is, shape here is designed so that a rated bow shackle can fit through there whether it be the pin or whether it be the main threaded part of the body of the the bow shackle it can go through there and mount into there so these are just a nice way of securing the end of your winch rope and with this rubber rubber protection here that just sits against the horse on the front of your winch and you know it's all just there packed up ready to go when you need it okay so now we come back to that 700 millimetres that I was talking about before. So you want to measure that out. So, um, and now in the old school, that's 27 inches. And because this fit is marked up in inches, I'm just going to go with four lengths of that. Okay. So let's just pull that out and go one, two, three, for. Now look, I don't think it's a precise, you must have exactly this amount or it's going to fail. I think the concept is that you want to have heaps. So I'm just going to put a nice black mark there on the rope. That's how far I need to make sure I bury this. Now this is all going to start making a whole bunch more sense for you in a second. So there's the end of where, where my rope needs to end. So now I can just even that up. Okay, so is that making sense? We've gone through the splicer, we've measured out our 700 millimetres, and now we're going to feed this through. So this is called a deep berry, and if you use this method it's going to do you for pretty much anything you do out there on a trail with your winch rope, and it's going to maintain 100% of your winch ropes strength, which is a really important element. Here's an interesting fact. If you ever get a, a knot in your winch rope, you drop the strength of that rope by 60%. It's gonna break at that knot. 
again that was the boys at Roadrunner did some uh, testing on that so what you're going to do now with your fast fit mounted onto your rope sorry I did that without showing you okay so that basket comes on and clamps down and it's just going to hold that hold that on there nice <laughs> nice please hold on there nice so that's just going to clamp on there and hold that rope onto the onto the fid now we just feed the fid up nice and close through the rope like that just like sewing class at school all right through that side and then come down here about two sets of braid so we'll just duck through there and just go back through the rope try not to go through the actual strands try to go through the gaps in the strands like that okay just pull that back through okay so you can see what we've done there okay and cinch that nice and tight okay and now we do the berry so again come back through go in about two find an opening and now you'll find in the center of the rope it becomes a hollow when you push it or bunch it together like that so I'm just going to bunch this up see how I'm just feeding the fid down the middle now obviously if you don't have a fid that's fine you'd be able to do this just using the the, the electrical tape that we've put on there keeps coming through we're looking for that line that I marked on here there it is down there so just keep bringing that in oh you stay in there don't come out so you hear me talking about the factor 55 gear well there is a way that you can support my channel and what I do here at Mad Mat Fall Drive because um, as you can imagine it's an expensive process creating these YouTube videos every week um, if you go to the website A247, and there'll be a link down below, and you use the code MADMAT, anything in store, you get a discount of oh, 20 Australian dollars off, and uh, I get a kickback from that, and it just helps support the channel. Okay, so now we've come out of the rope just below my black mark here, and it's important you come out below or past that mark, because then the rope will bury so now i'm going to bring the rope out the side like that and take my fit off and remove the tape there we go so just um, got the tape off okay now we're going to milk the rope back up into itself like this Look at that. Okay. Now, there's the end of my, my end of my rope's just inside here. You can just see it there. Okay, that's the end of the rope. There's my mark. So, just milk that back into the rope. And that there is now ready for winching duties and the beauty of it is we haven't reduced the strength of our winch rope it's still 100 percent capable and the way it's essentially working is when we load up our winch rope all of these fibers are clamping down on that deep berry which is this section of rope just here that we've got going on now this is the beauty of this whole setup if ever you want to pull your splicer off watch how easy this is Pull that out, pull that out, pull that out, easy as that. And, and that's the beauty of, of this method, it's just so easy to work with, but in practice when you're out there on the field, it's not going to come off, it's not going to break. So there you go, I hope that's been helpful for you. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.